When we think of places you might find life, I totally wrote beer there. Where if you find a planet orbiting there, hey, a good chance it could have liquid water. Is kept warm, not from energy sources traceable to the sun, but from what we call the tidal forces of Jupiter itself. So Jupiter and surrounding moons are actually pumping energy into Europa. So everybody who tried to make proclamations about the physical universe based on Bible passages got the wrong answer. <laughs> Gets eaten. And when you do that, the ultraviolet light doesn't make it to Earth's surface. So even though they say, oh, wear, wear uh, sunscreen and sunblock 45, yes, that's for the 1% of the ultraviolet that gets through the atmosphere. If you're above the atmosphere, you are fried. Okay. Well, wait a minute. If the sun is one ninth as large and you're getting one ninth the light, if you divide those two, then one ninths cancel. It has the same surface brightness as it did when it was closer. So this whole sort of reinterpretation of the, how figurative the poetic passages of the Bible are came after science showed that this is not how things unfolded. And oxygen, uh, ozone likes ultraviolet light. So ultraviolet light comes from the sun and gets eaten by ozone. Too far away, it would freeze. And neither of those states of H2O are, are useful to life as we know it. You would say the world was created in six days and that stars are just little points of light, much lesser than the sun. And in fact, they can fall out of the sky. Its area on the sky drops to one ninth of what it was before. It goes as the square of the distance. You want to block the ozone, you want to block the ultraviolet so that you can protect organic life, all right? So we have an ozone layer, it's the three oxygen atoms, O3. You're one of the signs that yeah. the second coming is that the stars will fall out of the sky and land on Earth. So it's even right that means you don't know what those things are. You have no concept of what the actual universe is. Most people were in church. Churches were the largest structures of the day. If it's three times farther away, something called the inverse square law of light drops the total brightness by the distance squared. If you have an earthquake, what's the first building to collapse? It's the ones that are the largest. Have you thought about it this way? Do you understand the data, the statistics? And, and it's been gestating within me. And then the, the book was birthed whole. <laughs> it was, wow. and I really Most susceptible. So people died in churches. Then there's a tsunami that basically wiped Lisbon off the map. So if it's three times farther away, three squared is nine, the brightness you're receiving from the sun is only one ninth of what it was before. Thanks, actually I lean towards wine, but, but, but. Or God is not all powerful. But it's not clear whether God could be both of those at the same time for that event. It's one ninth as large. Are you with me? Wait, wait, where did that come from? <laughs> uh, this book has been gestating within me mm. for decades. Just, uh, in fact, I can remember my first thoughts when I was scientifically literate, early middle school. I'd look around and I'd see adults saying things, making decisions, commenting, holding opinions. It was like, what? Now, it turns out that this source of heat, of course, is traceable to the sun. 80,000 people died. By the way, that earthquake took place on All Saints Day. All of these parts of society could benefit from a dose of a cosmic perspective, just what does that look like from above, mm. but also an infusion of science literacy and critical thinking. And if every sight line lands on a star, then the entire night sky should be as bright as the surface of the sun. Let's look there first for life as we know it. In a way where your argument that you thought you held firmly and you thought you were opposite the person you were fighting with, in fact, from another perch, you could learn that you both actually agree more than you disagree. Either God is not all good, if we define good as being in the interest of your health and longevity, that's a pretty simple definition of something that's good for you. Or you're both equally wrong and you realize it together. <laughs> so now, watch what happens. If I put the sun three times farther away. Okay, either of those are, are progress 
in any kind of, uh, between any warring factions in modern society. Yeah. But Europa, a moon of Jupiter sitting well outside of the Goldilocks zone. Adequately subtle, which is at the heart of this, but I'm adding it just for people who could hear the little bit of extra math, but uh, I could describe it without the math, but I'd rather not, okay? All so right. here it goes. Um, let's take the sun for a moment, okay? All right. And it has a certain size on the sky. Yeah, that is. However, this country, the United States, um, was quite the fascinating experiment in that regard. It's whatever is your personal truth, uh, it's welcomed, uh, but you can't tell someone else, you can't require someone else have your personal truth. Okay. okay. He posed a, a profound question, which was, why is the night sky dark? And that gave religion freedom to express itself in all stripes and all varieties in this country. That's remarkable. And so, but that's a particular kind of truth. In the chapter, Truth and Beauty, I, I, I go into this in great detail. And okay. there's a certain amount of light coming from the sun and it's, it's very bright, okay? But there's something called surface brightness. It's a very important term in astrophysics. So it's not what the total brightness of the thing is, it's how much light is coming from a particular area on the sky. So, uh, so he lived in the late 1700s, early 1800s, and he formulated a question that I think had been bandied about for a while, but he's, it's got his name on this. In the morning, when most people, Lisbon, one of the holiest cities in Europe, but I, I, I had to split the word truth into three parts because there are many people who, especially religions, they really attach themselves to the word truth, and I don't want to take that away from them. Okay, I I mean, I'm gonna save him some trouble. I got the answer. Oh, you have the answer. I okay. do indeed. Oh, by the because that answer didn't arrive until like the 1920s. So you tell me you have an answer. Okay, go. Uh, Let me hear it. As simple as this, because it's nighttime. <laughs> Boom. Because <Boom. laughs> the sun the sunset. Is that what you There you go. We saw it go down, bro. <laughs> now it's dark. <laughs> Okay, no, that ain't how that works. Okay, uh, okay. all right. So I I'm gonna say something mathem- So there's a personal truth. Is Jesus your savior? Is, is, is Abraham your, you know, in your, in your lineage? Is, is Muhammad your, the, your last savior? Is ancestor, are your ancestors watching you? These are, these are cherished beliefs. And it works provided that if you have that belief, you don't then rise to power over laws and legislation mm. and have those laws and legislation force others into that same belief system. Where water would be liquid in its natural state. And if you get a little too close to the star, heat would evaporate the water and you don't have it anymore. It's gone. Okay, so it's one ninth as large. Okay? Because three times farther away, it's like one third its height and it's one third in the width. And in the area, you're down by a factor of nine. We typically think of the Goldilocks zone around a star. What it means is you could put the sun at any distance from you and a sight line to its surface will be just as bright as a sight line to a, air, a, a spot on its surface if it's close up. What I'm saying it's a, it's a mathematical reality of the geometry of what's going on. We need liquid water. So you can establish this green zone, this habitable zone, this Goldilocks zone, 